Amen. Church, amen. Amen. Man to robe and crown. Amen. We have a, a moment. If you would turn with me to the book of Romans, the chapter 7. Say amen. We have verse number 18. Amen. Romans chapter 7, verse number 18. Thank you. Paul writes one of the most complicated passages of scripture in all of his writings. Because he deals with the dichotomy of men in various ways without necessarily exposing the mind, the body, and the spirit or the soul. He envisions that part of him is trapped in another compartment of him in which he desires to do good. And he paints a picture of a spiritual man all together as a fleshly man who's in some type of warfare. His writing is even hard to read because he says, for if I do that which I would not, it is no more than I but sin that dwelleth in me. But when I do what I do that I would not, that I hate, becomes a challenging to read throughout the course of Scripture. So in verse number 18, Paul begins by making an acknowledgement of his own inventory. And he says, for I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. I want to talk to you this morning about the war called World War Me. World War Me. Stay with me if you will. It is in chapter 8 which Paul have both addressed the Jews and the Gentiles who constantly spent their time pointing fingers at one another. In chapter 1, we find the, the salutation and the adulation of Paul uh, saying that the gospel is for the Jew and the Greek. And he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. By chapter 2, we find that he is now defending the Gentiles who are being accused by the Jews to be more sinful. Around verse number 11, he says, When those that had not the law do the things that were contained in the law, they became a law unto themselves. As we move on through the scriptures, he is now addressing both Jew and Gentile, as I am addressing myself and you as I preach. And he reminds mankind that in us dwelleth no good thing. That is in my flesh, although I realize and I have actualized that I am a spirit, that I live in a body, and that I possess a soul, I understand that my spirit and my flesh sometimes become cantankerous to one toward the other. I understand that as I read that there are some times in my life as well as your life in which the good that I would, I do not, and I don't know how to perform it. Because there is a part of me that is in my flesh that has a mind of its own. While at the same time, there is another part of me that sincerely wants to be in a relationship with God. And I'm conflicted between the two because at risk and at stake is my soul. I'm reminded that my body don't have to pay for what my flesh does. Because God is not coming back for the flesh. God is coming back to save and redeem the souls of mankind. And as I'm reading the scripture, I, I, I can't help but try to find the enemy in the text. For silently, silently as we look at the text, we find over and over again at least six or seven times in a very short period of time, that Paul continues to address the subject matter of me. Look at verse number 18. He says, so I know that in me, uh, that is in my flesh, there dwelleth no good thing, for there are two spirits. 
spirits, there are two wheels in me. It means that I can be perfectly good and perfectly bad all at the same time if I don't watch myself. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. That you know as well as I know that, that, that there are times when you're on your way and everything is going all right that you can think of some devilish stuff out of nowhere. Uh, you know that sometimes you know to do what's right. You know to forgive. You know to love. You know what God says, but at the same time, you can hate somebody with all your heart and do something to them if you don't watch yourself. I, I, I'm trying to get this stuff under control, and, and I can come to church on Sunday morning, and I can shout amen and hallelujah, and by Monday morning, I'm in the midst of my stuff because I don't know how to control uh, this stuff that's in me. Amen. I'm in a war within myself. And, 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 and I find myself. I find myself being, 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 being good at times. But the text says that in verse number 20, it says, every time that I'm good, somebody ought to say amen. amen. Evil is always amen. present. Amen. Every time I help an old lady across the street, there's a part of me that's saying she ought to give you three dollars for what you just did. Ah, somebody ought to say amen. And every time I, I, I help somebody out and I loan you twenty dollars and I expect my money back on Monday like you said, oh, we gonna get down. Somebody ought to say amen. I'm doing good, but, but every time I do good, evil is always Isaiah 64 and verse number 4. He said that our good, our best self is nothing but filthy rags before God. And I don't know what to do because there's a good in me, but then the bad in me is always right there. Somebody ought to say amen right now. Uh, Paul knew what he was talking about because Paul wrote in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 9 that every time there's an opportunity in front of me, there's a presence. Remember the text said there are two wheels that are present with me. And even when good stuff is in front of you, your adversary is sitting right there looking at you, right there beside you. But when God is blessing you, that stuff is sitting right there beside you that will mess you up and trip you up if you don't watch out. And I'm conflicted. I'm messed up because on my best day can also be my worst day. And I live my life in ups and downs and rounds and rounds, knowing that I want to desire to be with God, but being trapped in my flesh. Amen. Amen. I find myself brought into bondage. Captivity, he says. So then with my mind, I serve the law of God. With my flesh, I serve sin. Well, preacher, what do you mean by all this? I understand that the best of me I find myself covered sometimes with the enemy all around me. I'm trying to find uh, what it is that keep messing me up. I'm in a war and the war does not clearly identify the enemy. I want you just for a moment to step outside the text but be right by the text and listen to uh, the words of Job. Once that Job came before God in heaven and we came before God, not Job, but the Bible said there was a day when the angels of God presented themselves before God. And the Bible said that the devil came and presented himself to uh -huh. Even when I'm at a good place in my life, the devil can come and be at a good place where I am. Amen. Amen. You can go to a good job and you'll find a devil on a good job. Amen. You can go to a good church like Uptown Church of Christ Amen. and the devil will come in a church. Amen. You can have a good home and a good family and if you don't watch it, the devil will present himself right there. Perhaps the text reveals that it's the devil that's the enemy. But we'll find out at the end of this lesson. We find that that there is a law that God says in the text. So I understand that the law is that when you do good, evil is always present. Uh -huh. So I begin this anonymous journey, being baptized around the age 23 for real, for real. 
And as I'm walking, you must remember that I am 100% man, but I'm also 100% leaning on Jesus. And I remember being baptized and feeling full of joy and hope. I can relate to what Paul is saying because at the same time that you're baptized, the devil is right there looking at your baptism. And the old you, the part that's trapped in you, went down in the water with you and got up out of the water with you. I left out like many of you, elated and overjoyed, but, but all of a sudden hope don't look like hope no more. All of a sudden I found that, that even within the church, there are problems and trials and tribulation. And as I'm sitting here, mine and my own business, the silent voice in the text is saying to me, Gregory, Gregory, Come back, man. You don't have to live like that. The streets ain't changed. You know the game, but still I press on. Because the good in me says that God is able to deliver me from all of my demons. Am I right about it? I move on and I keep trying to do good. And every time I try to do good, I got involved in the youth group. And I got involved in this ministry. And I was praying. I read in the 
Bible, the book of Psalms, chapter 73. Around the 11th verse, he said, These are the ungodly. These are the ungodly that prosper in the world. And I wonder sometimes I'm sitting here and just barely able to make one end meet from the next one. Other folk are just having themselves a good time and bringing my own silly self here and there, trying to do the Lord's work. Why is it that they prosper? And I hear that voice again. Gregory. Oh, Gregory. Come back. You ain't got to live like that. Y'all never heard that voice before? Y'all ought to say, quit acting holy. You know, you know, you know that stuff be calling you when you sit, you get frustrated. Don't act like it don't be calling you. When you get mad, it says, it says, Christian, Christian, you ain't got to live like that. Hit him in his mouth. Amen. And Paul is saying in the text that I don't care what you do, you never reach a point in which the world on the streets don't call on your flesh. That's right, that's right. And the street is calling your flesh. And you've got to find the enemy because you don't find the enemy. You will listen to that message of the street. It's calling your flesh to do. It is not by happenstance or accident that we live and do the things that we do. We live in a war, I tell you, church. We live in war and spirits and war and time. And with Satan or the enemy or whoever it may be, it's trying to drag us back from where God has delivered us to. Amen. Amen. So, I reject Hinduism. And then I remember Flip Wilson. He confirmed the text. You remember Paul said, if I do that, which I would not, it is no more than I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. Perhaps the text is suggesting that sin is my enemy. I've heard folks say over and over again that look what sin did. In fact, Flip Wilson put it this way in the 1970s. He said, the devil made me do it. Uh -huh. But I understand that the devil don't have any power over you. Am I right about it? Even when he tried to put his hands on Job, he had to ask God for permission to mess with his child. Uh, the devil had made you do anything. In fact, James, in fact, in James 1, verse number 13, let no man say, when he is tempted, he's tempted of God. But God no man, neither is he tempted, but every man, when he is drawn away and enticed, he is drawn away and enticed of his own lust. Yes. Amen. Satan can't do nothing to you unless it's in you to be done in the first place. Right. So when I look at the text, I find that sin is not the enemy in the text. I find that stress is not the enemy in the text. And I find that the stuff that go on is not the enemy in the text. I find that Satan is not the enemy of the text. Well, who else could it be that's the enemy in the text? In Revelation, the Bible declares that it's been declared through John preaching on the house of Panama. So Revelation 11, verses 7 through 8. Read it if you have it. Go ahead and read it. The Bible says, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended, the beast that ascended the out of the bottom of the sea shall make war against shall them. Make war against them. And shall overcome and them. And shall overcome them. And kill them. And kill them. And their dead bodies. And their dead bodies, bodies the shall lie in the, in the street of the what? The great city. Of the great city. Which spiritually is which called Sodom. Which spiritually is called Sodom. Egypt. And Egypt. Where also our Lord. Where also our Lord and Savior was crucified. Maybe the enemy is Satan. You, hope, you know folks say, watch out. The devil's going to do this and the devil's going to do that. But if you look at Romans 7, 18 through 25, There's a silent voice. Gregory, Gregory, come back. You ain't got to live like that. The streets ain't changed. You know this game. Come back. And every now and again, all of us come back. Amen. Anyhow, every now and again, we ask for call. Yeah. Every now and again we do something. We ought not 
Things ain't changed. You ought to leave the church. You know the game. But still, we press on. I'm glad today that when I look introspectively, the text indicates that there's a problem. And the problem is not seeing stress or saving. But the problem is clearly identified in the preceding verses. But when I look retrospectively, I cannot blame my problem on Satan Murphy's law, Gundy, nor the devil made me do it. I realize that in 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, that the Bible says, be careful and be diligent. For your adversary, the devil, he goes about as a ruling mind. But you know, the devil really is not my problem. In fact, most of the stuff that Satan try to do, we can see is wrong a mile away. But still, we hear this voice saying, Christian, Christian, come back. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to live like that. Streets ain't changed. You know the game. But still, we press on. This text reaches a connected point when Paul says, but I see another member. Why? When I look at this text, in verse 23, when I look at this text, I find that I don't see Satan or anything, but I see two entities in the battle, in the battlefield in the world for me. I see an enemy that's simply identified, but I see another member warring against the members of my mind. Whatever the enemy is, he does not describe it on two legs with a heart. Whatever the enemy is, he is not described as Satan. Oh, 
Here's the quiet part of the text. As long as God 